He was just a human being that was in a system that was so desperately oppressive that it, it made him question his own drive and his own aspirations. Because here's a guy that could have said, well, I have a family, I have a daughter. Why don't I just take what I have and make that the best it can be? Which is usually the perspective we take as hu human beings in 2016. We don't want to get involved with the injustice of the world because we don't want to give up our own privilege. And I feel like that's where we can learn something from Matt Turner because he said, well, I'm willing to sacrifice my family, I'm willing to sacrifice my privilege, anything that I've gained on behalf of the freedom and liberation of my people. That is something I think for me that was worth telling the story for. The reality is we need to break new ground. We need to look back and say we are built on sand. So if we are to move forward in a way that's productive, uh, outside of slogans and ideas, but real actions and activation, we have to question the ground we stand on and pour new, pour new cement. So I wanted to reclaim that title um, as a way of, of taking people's eyes back to the root so they could recognize the fruit that they were uh, eating. I always say I, I directed the movie in prep and then just showed up and just hung out with actors. You know, because it took so much in the, in, in the preparation to make sure that we would get through our days. You know, um, the day we shot the battle scene, the day, from the beginning and we shot it, I got an email from my first AD. He said, Con congratulating, congratulations on shooting a week today. Yeah, like that's because I shot a week in a day. You know what I mean? It's like for all the things that we got, you know, we brought in, we had three cameras um, and three operators, obviously, and focus pulls, and everyone was just running, you know? And my whole thing was, don't worry about getting in each other's way. Shoot everything. And I had it so well thought out and so well mapped that I knew we would hit what we needed to hit when we needed to hit it. And, you know, I had an opportunity to meet with Steven Soderberg, Soderberg before this, and he said, know what you want and know when you've got it. I think that's what got me through the process. And the trick really wasn't in the shooting of it, it was in preserving the integrity of the emotion and what was happening. So I constantly had to remind, when we yelled cut, it was me pulling everyone together and saying, this is what we're fighting for. This is why this is important. You know, this is, if we do all of this and make our day, and we don't capture the essence of, of, of an oppressed people, um, an, a tortured people, um, then we lose. When thinking about having to perform, um, I always say, say, I've been in prep ever since I became an activist. For me, understanding the importance of Nat Turner and projecting the story in a way that's positive and honest has been on my soul since the moment I said I need to make this film. So through my research, through prayer, through constant and fervent pr prayer, um, I felt like I knew who he was. I felt like I knew what he was saying, and I felt like I could embody those things. You know, I had help. You know, Robin Swicord, um, Sundance Film Festival, Sundance Institute helped me. Michelle Satter, um, you know, got me. Robin Swicord as a mentor, and she took me through exercises of 
connecting with Nat Turner. You know what I mean? We did visualization exercises with connecting with Nat Turner. So when I showed up on set, and I also had an acting coach that would stand behind, you know, over in Video Village, and I'd do the take, and I'd look over, and he'd go, or he'd go. And that was it. That was our shorthand. Um, but I, I had to trust. I had to trust that he was, that he and I were the same when it came to telling the truth on the other side of the camera. And, uh, and the, the strange thing is you never know what you have. You never know. You just know what it feels like. And it always felt honest to me. And if it didn't, I did it again. You know. It takes a village, specifically to make a film, you know? It takes a village to raise a child. This is a child um, that will soon be you know, set out, and, you know, let out into the world. Um, I made up my mind at a very early stage that I would only pursue the best crew members in the business. Um, if it meant me writing letters, if it meant me uh, making cold phone calls, if it meant me showing up to someone's house, and I did all of these things for this project. Um, we were able to put together a team um, that was so incredible in the sense of what they were able to do in their capacity that when people read the names they can't believe that they all came together for this film. And uh, I think it speaks less to me and me being a, a great storyteller or having a great script, um, but I think it speaks to the, to the idea that people want to be used for something good. People are now more than ever interested in making legacy decisions with respect to their craft, you know? And, and I played on this, you know? And I was very serious, it was from an honest place, but I said, you know, what have you made before? And what are those things will you be able to point at and say, I tried to do something good, I tried to do something progressive, you know? What, what are the films that we'll be able to point to our kids and say, that was for you? That one right there was to deal with an issue so you won't have to ever again. You know, you know, um, optimism with respect to our future. You know, where can we point to anything and say that makes me optimistic? That's what I wanted to do, and it only took a, a letter or a conversation to activate that in, in certain people.